All right, everyone, thanks for tuning in. Today we're going to be doing part four of the Locks and Keys series. We're going to be talking about gate 15, the pattern. And uh, I have my cup of coffee here. Thanks, Ginny V, for this awesome um, mug. And uh, those of you who were at the High Desert Human Design Conference last year will know we were selling these, or she was. Um, Make sure to check out Ginny's awesome work. She's been doing these cards um, journey, you know, around the wheel where each week she'll do one or two gates and post them on her Instagram. It's everyone underscore is underscore different. And that's with the number one. Today, um, yeah, I'm just going to be, I actually have this, um, I don't know if you can see in the background there, I have the, the uh, wheel pulled up. Show this a little closer for people. You can just look this up online. If you look up locks and keys, you will find this graphic. And it shows the keynotes for the locks. And um, so the keynote for, for the lock of gate 15 is the pattern. And this is really what sets the logical pattern. This is what sets uh, the pattern of the era, really. So let's talk about what gate 15 is normally in its sort of normal, non-global cycle association. Here I have my Ray V. Ching. You must have. You can pick these up from Human Design America, uh, also here in Santa Fe, New Mexico. And so we see the 15th gate is part of the cross with the vessel of love. It is the gate of the aura, and it is the self that is magnetic. So this is the aura of humanity. This is what sets our aura, that sets the pattern for the aura. The magnetism of the era, the magnetism of the time. The love of this gate is for humanity. This channel, when defined, always determines the rhythm of the environment. So we can even kind of deconstruct here that this is something about the rhythm and the pace of the environment that we're in. What is the pace of the environment what is the rhythm of the environment that we live in? Modesty is the traditional, in the traditional sense is a matter of balancing extremes. It's about balancing the extremes. Through this gate, the possible extremes are lived out. People who are busy or not, sleep long and short, eat early, eat late. In other words, people who will live out extremes in their rhythm. If you're talking about uh, electromagnetics, in this connection, each partner activates the opposite gate of a channel forming a definition. This is attraction, repulsion, love, hate, a basic relationship dynamic. However, in three cases, the 4521, the 3536, and the 515, this type of connection is very difficult. This is one of those three. The 15th gate is uncomfortable with a fixed pattern, and the 5th gate is destabilized by extreme rhythms. Yeah, so he's just kind of saying that in these cases, in three cases, there's such an extreme difference between between the two. You know, 35 is so uncomfortable with 36 and vice versa. 45 is so uncomfortable with 21 and vice versa. And in this case, the 15 and the 5 are very uncomfortable with each other. It's known as the design of being in the flow. So it's about the flow of the era and the quality of behavior which expresses the proper balance between extremes. So what quality of behavior has been encouraged these last 400 years? What quality of behavior is going away and will be appearing? What is kind of going away in our collective aura and our collective rhythm and what is now coming into our collective aura and collective rhythm? Well, first, what's going away, I only have to turn one page, because it's actually gate 16 uh, is what's going away. Or if you watch this after 2027, what has gone away. 16, the gate of skills. And this has been the key, um, you know, for the last 400 odd years, for this has been the key to the pattern. This has been the pattern for humanity. This has been the, the behavior that's been expected, not in the gate 10 sense of behavior, but in a, a quality of behavior of navigating the extremes. How do we navigate the extremes? Well, through gate 16. Talent. And so this has been something that we've been encouraged to develop. Each and every one of us 
develops our talent. I mean, think about um, the talent show and what the talent show is and what it is to to say, okay, let's share the talent now. It's time to share the talent. Think of all the family family events. You know, I went to a wedding where every member of the family, I was like, gosh, who in this family doesn't have the talent? One of them's an actor, one is a singer, one is, I mean, everyone is expected to have talent. That's one of the expectations in this modern age. You're expected to show your talent, for better or worse. Talent, by its very design, is so often dependent on others for manifestation. The defining of the spleen to the throat allows only for verbal manifestation. Every gate of the throat center has a voice, and the 16th gate says, I experiment. Since the understanding circuit is about patterns and focus, it makes a clear statement about the quality of talent being dependent on repetition. Constant experimentation over and over, goaded by the critical capacity to find the, quote, perfect expression. So this has been a huge part of the last 400 years. It's been repetition, practice. Practice makes perfect. Develop your talent repeatedly you know, practice. This has been the pattern. The pattern has been, if you practice, you will develop talent. If you follow the pattern, if you focus, and so on. Um, and you know, the 16th gate is the gate of skills, the ancient Chinese hexagram of music, dance, and the arts. However, this gate is not specifically about the fine arts. Inherent in its capacity is skills for living, a talent for life. Uh, and then one of the keys to, to design analysis is to recognize that harmonic gates are always projecting each other's attributes on the other. The 48 is always self-critical about not having enough skills. The 16, critical of itself about not having enough depth, not being more complex. The 48 confuses skills and, with depth. The 16 confuses depth with skills. Incidentally, this was the relationship of John Lennon, who was a 48, with Paul McCartney, the 16. So skills, talent, you know, the channel of talent, this has been, we've been expected to essentially follow the pattern of developing our skills through repetition, through logic, and through understanding. This is in the understanding circuit. This is also a time of experimentation. Think about all the incredible experimentation that's happened since the 1600s, the scientific experimentation. Think about how we're all encouraged to say, I experiment. I mean, even human design. Human design it wouldn't have emerged if we didn't have gate 16 as one of the programming keys of this era because that is what enables us to experiment so much. It's what says, hey, green light on experimentation. If you want to enter into the rhythm of this world, if you want to match the rhythm, if you want to feel the aura of this world, this is a rhythm of experimentation, an aura of experimentation, and this is all about understanding and about patterns and about repetition. And so here's the rhythm we're in. We're in the rhythm of repetition to develop our talent. And we can see, um, you know, of course, they move through the lines. We have the, the six lines here. And, uh, oops. and we can see that starting in the 1600s, we started with gullibility and then the Grinch, and moving into the 1700s with the leader and independence in the 1800s. And finally, we entered into, uh, around 1960, we entered into delusion. And so delusion is an interesting keynote for this era, you know, for the past 70 years. Um, well, it will be, let's see, 61. Yeah, so for the past 60 years, 60 some odd years, we've been in a time of false enthusiasm the daydreamer, the expression of talent through daydreaming, or, in detriment, the public communication of inevitably unrealized claims, the tendency to express fantasy as fact. So that's an interesting one. We're already kind of seeing how, um, just in the last 50 years or so, there's been a lot of daydreaming, and there's also been uh, you know, unrealized claims being announced talking about things that don't actually happen, talking about we're going to send someone to Mars, talking about the world's going to change in this and that way. There's a lot of fantasy. See, there's a lot of technological development in the 16. And in fact, Ra talks about Aldebaran, the fixed star, transiting gate 16 and really paving the way for the scientific, the scientific revolution. And um, 
or you know uh, to usher that in and in fact Ra does associate 16 with science with the sciences so we can see with the experimentation of the sciences the development of, of science but then also the tendency to express fantasy as fact I mean you don't have to look any further than the um, post-humanists and the transhumanists like Ray Kurzweil um, who are expressing a lot of fantasy around artificial intelligence as if it were fact. For anyone interested in that debate, I highly recommend the yudkowsky Aronson debate. That's um, Eliezer Yudkowsky of Less Wrong with Scott Aronson, the um, quantum computing genius. And I highly recommend their debate where, you know, Yudkowsky says that currently artificial intelligence can model an ant. It's only a matter of time until it can model a human. To which Aronson replies, not only can artificial intelligence not model an ant, we can't even model a single microtubule inside of a single cell of an ant. So, you know, um, we're a long ways to go. But there's a lot of people out there expressing their fantasy of the transhumanist, posthumanist AI future as if it were fact. And that's just one of the many, many, many fantasies expressed as fact. Uh, so we do see that there is a lot of delusion in this time. We are deluded. Uh, before this, going back, you know, to turn of the century, 1900 until the, the mid-1950s, 1960, we, we see the theme of the cynic, the sharpness to burst bubbles, self-reliance, and the skill to judge objectively any claim, regardless of rhetoric. The expression of the skill to judge objectively, that, that was definitely a, a big theme in, in the Western world, at least, from the 20s, 30s, 40s, 50s, this sort of cynicism and the, the cynicism that is so sharp, it'll burst any bubble. Uh, and it's self-reliance, really, self-reliant cynicism. But then there's also the detriment, the compulsive cynic, whose very cynicism is a source of enthusiasm. Objectivity expressed through cynicism. It's interesting that Mercury has brought out the detriment these last 100 years plus. Uh, both of those lines are brought out by the detriment in Mercury. Before that, we see the detriments of Mars. Um, and yeah, so going back to the you know 1840s, 1900-ish, we have independence, self-generating and sustaining enthusiasm, um, the proper timing to maintain rhythm and avoid deflation. So interesting, that was a time where the key to maintaining proper rhythm, you know, it's kind of a, a little bit of a redoubling there. The independent skill and possible talent to express proper timing and rhythm, or the child whose overconfidence may lead to frustration and the ensuing dependence on others to regenerate enthusiasm, creating unnecessary reliance. The need to have others confirm one's skills or talent. So that's an interesting time period also where the pattern, the rhythm of life was very much wrapped up in the struggle for independence, but also the dependence on others to maintain the enthusiasm. Going back further, this is almost from the time of the founding of the United States uh, up till the Civil War, roughly, more or less, give or take 10 or 20 on either, either side. Genuine and sincere support and recognition of others, the leader, enthusiasm for and service to higher goals, the skills to recognize and support the talents of others, or the demagogue, the refusal to support or recognize the talents of others. And there was a lot going on. I don't mean to just make it you know, American-centric at that, at that point in time. We can see how the whole world had to go through um, this sort of transformation in you know, how, how it developed the, I'll read the, the blue line here, or just, uh, sorry, the description line, the great art of enriching life by the harmonic channeling of energy. So that was a huge, large-scale project. That was a large-scale project for hundreds of years. How do we enrich life by harmonic channeling of energy? How do we work together? Starting around 1610, and for the 1600s, up until the, the late 1600s, we have gullibility, susceptibility to propaganda. Um, you know, so it's, uh, it's basically a, a difficult, that was kind of a difficult rough start with the sixth line. It's the ability to experience, examine, and then reject misleading enthusiasm the talent to assess the expression of others, or the same principle, but where Neptune will destroy and then seek new forms, Jupiter will painfully withdraw. Its enthusiasm for social structure is permanently prejudiced. The failure to express the expression of, to assess the expression of others. So that was a time in history that was really being called 
it's interesting. We can see like even just the exalts and the detriments of a time. In the 1600s, we were being called collectively to rely on our imagination to destroy old structures and make way for the new. Neptune was the exaltation of that time. Jupiter, which was holding on to the social structures, the pre-1600 social structures, was permanently prejudicing it and making it withdraw instead of experiencing, examining, and then rejecting the enthusiasm and dissolving um, and then seeking new forms, right, which would be the healthy thing. We go on to the Grinch. That's always, I always like seeing that one, the fifth line of, uh, line six, of gate 16. That's going to be taking us into the 1700s. This is still bef before 1781. Remember, this is before the nine centered being. This is before the projector. Um, as we entered into the, the 1700s, we had the Grinch, the refusal to share an enthusiasm, the blue line there. Uh, the power to avoid enthusiasm for the sole purpose of being converted. As with Dickens' Scrooge, eventual conversion leads to greater and more enduring enthusiasm, a lack of confidence in the expression of skills that needs the encouragement of others, or the perverse feeling that sharing an enthusiasm hampers individual development. Why should I be happy when, etc.? A lack of confidence in the value of encouraging others. So this was just a time where collectively humanity was navigating how much it was going to encourage each other and share in that enthusiasm. I mean, this is collective. This is about sharing and sharing and understanding. And there was a time period in that, I mean, this is probably what led up to the French Revolution was there were so many Grinches who would not share an enthusiasm with anyone else uh, because they were not confident in the value of encouraging others. And so this was kind of maybe that one of the final heydays of that sort of pre-nine-centered feudalistic selfishness that led into 1781 and into that, that transformation. And then, of course, starting around then and going into the 1800s, we have the, the leader, line four, genuine and sincere support and recognition of others, enthusiasm for and service to higher goals. So, I mean, of course, it still has a detriment. There's still were people refusing to help and refusing to support. But you can see that at a high level, this was the story of how humanity, in a large part, became collectivized, became able to interact with strangers in a collective way, to share in the enthusiasm with each other, to share in the understanding with each other, um, and how it ultimately ended up in delusion, which is interesting. We start with gullibility and we end with delusion. And we have leadership and independence in the middle. So as we've been in this first line of, of Gate 16, yeah, we, we do have um, daydreaming and false enthusiasm and a sort of limbo where that enthusiasm is waning. And what is it giving way to? So here we see that the new key is going to be Gate 20. And of course, we're moving out of line 1 of Gate 16 into line 6 of Gate 20. Gate 20, the gate of the now, a design of... It's part of channel of awakening, which is a design of commitment to higher principles, the channel of the brainwave, a design of awareness, and the channel of charisma, a design where thoughts must be deeds, or must become deeds. Contemplation, gate 20, is the only purely existential gate. The throat center is the final stage in the process of expressing the intuition. The throat center is not aware. It has a mechanical function to speak or act, which can be conditioned by awareness. Each gate of the throat has its own unique voice. The voice of contemplation, unaware and free of maya, says, I am now. When the intuition is defined to the throat, the voice says, I know I am now. It is important to remember that the splenic center is not a motor. The channel of penetrating awareness remains strictly verbal. And though the knowing in the now exists as awareness, it cannot be transformed into action. When the entire stream of intuition is defined, the throat can then manifest all of the potential of intuition. I know what I am struggling for in the now. And that's when we include the 2838 in there, I suppose. So this is where we're headed then, is to gate 20. This will be the next big project. The description, recognition and awareness in the now, which transforms understanding into right action. So this is what we're being called to do to recognize and to be aware in the now 
and then to transform our understanding into right action. Because right now there's a disconnect. We can understand something, but still not take right action. It requires the recognition of the awareness in the now to transform that understanding into right action. And we're seeing that we're going to be entering into, or if it's after 2027, February 15th, then we're already in uh, gate 20, line 6. That is wisdom. So how funny to move from delusion to wisdom. We started out the last cycle with gullibility and ended with delusion. We begin this one with wisdom and we end 400 years from now with superficiality. It's funny to see that that's where we're headed to do some future forecasting. But starting in 2027, we have line six, wisdom, the blue line, contemplation, which results in the ability to apply understanding. So this is what's important now, to be able to apply the understanding. We know it. How do we apply it? The exaltation. Venus, the establishment for the benefit of society, values, ideals, and their patterns, and how they can be understood and applied. The ability to transform individual awareness for general application and understanding. Well, this is going to be the expression of the love of humanity. This is going to be the expression of the correct rhythm for this time we're entering into. We're entering into a, a rhythm which, which is benefited by establishing values, ideals, and patterns. Again, that word pattern, it's so interesting to see how when we have crossover, how the previous key, uh, gate 16, had the word pattern in it as well when it talks about the patterns. Now we're in gate 20, it's still talking about patterns. And this is, of course, to the key of gate 15, which is called the pattern. So we will either have the establishment for the benefit of society, values, ideals, and their patterns, and how they can be understood and applied, the ability to transform individual awareness for general application and understanding, or the same as above, but motivated by the self-satisfying mental challenge rather than altruism. The ability to transform individual awareness for general application for the mental challenge. So that's going to be an interesting one. It's going to be, you know, either way, the project is going to be how do we move from understanding something to actually taking right action? How do we transform individual awareness for general application and understanding? How do we transform it so it can act correctly and how it can put understanding into right action? It can, you know, this is going to be one of the big projects. So anybody out there who has gate 20, line six, you're being enlisted, you know, in these next few years and then, and then for the foreseeable future, um, for the next 60 years, you know, after, after 2027, you're going to be enlisted to use your wisdom, to use your line six of gate 20, and you know, to help others um, benefit through establishing values, ideals, and patterns, and explaining how they can be understood and applied. So this is very much about teaching. You know, this is a big teacher, and this is teaching you know, that the pattern that's going to be successful for humanity we're no longer in the pattern where we can simply develop our talent, we can simply develop our skills. We're now in a time where we really have to apply our understanding in the now, and we have to do that through contemplation and through recognition and awareness in the now, recognizing when the right moment is to act in a certain way, to put our understanding into practice. Um, this is kind of like what Jung talks about with after you go through the albedo phase of alchemy, you go through the rubedo. The albedo, or whitening, is the understanding. And the rubedo, or reddening, is putting the lifeblood into it, putting it into action. All right, do you have gate 20? Do you have line 6? What is your experience with this, uh, this particular configuration? Do you have gate 16, line 1, you know, um, or do you have one of the other lines of gate 16? And if so, do you feel a little bit, you know, anachronistic? If you have gate 16, line 3, do you feel like you were supposed to be born in the 1800s? I always like that question. But um, yeah, I'd love to hear your thoughts on this, your comments on it. What are some other ways we can deconstruct this? You know, what are some other ways? We see that we're losing the collective understanding and the logic and the skill. And what we're getting is the potential for awakening in the now. What we're getting is the potential to, you know, to really put our understanding into right action. Um, so, you know. Seems like a good trade to me. Love to hear your thoughts, though. Thanks for watching.